Hey, I'm CJ, and um, if I didn't post my opener from before, which I might not, uh, let me just say that every day I'd like to be discussing what's going on with me, you, all of our lives, my friends, during this crazy time, because it's not just about the virus, and it's not just about the deaths and the amount of cases that we have, we're all going through so much stuff that, um, as I said before in the last um, video that I will or won't post, who knows, because I'm just like new at this, um, I would like to have a new portal, not Twitter, not Facebook, just a, a, a Corona portal that we can feel open to share our thoughts and our grievances and our experiences and our worries and not be judged and if you want to judge me feel free write any comment you want I don't care I am fine I am the best person to judge my best friends on the phone right now and she knows that like bring it on you want to call me a fucking ass piece of shit bitch motherfucking cocksucker uh gold digging whore dumb, dumb bitch motherfucker go for it so I actually haven't talked to my best friend, her name's Antonella, in like a couple of days. Oh my god, that didn't... Oh my god, I don't think I've been recording this whole time. Podcast, whatever you want to call it, I'm just burning oh, it, all these it did. technological functions. And... You make, you make your, uh... Oh my god, wait, something is wrong with my computer. Oh, give me one yeah, second, okay? You won't phase me. Shit. I know, I'm still going over here. That's fine. Look, any one of our viewers, anyone, I'm still recording, any one of uh, these new viewers that want to watch me will know that I'm non-technological and something happened to another thing and this and that and you know what? We're not all here to be professional. We're here to just talk about our life and experiences and our grievances and X, Y, Z. All right. So, Antonella. Hi. Yes. Okay. I haven't talked to you in a while, like, since this actually all started. So, I mean, first of all, let me ask you a question. When was the first moment that you realized that this was some serious fucking business? Um, probably when I had a couple of doctor's appointments. One was on uh, St. Valentine's Day. I'd gone to a few doctors, uh, not St. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day was the doctor's appointment that mm -hmm. was canceled. I'd gone to a few other appointments that week, and like on the second Well, March 17th is St. Patty's Day, so it was yeah. right about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had gone to an opening. The last actual social event I had, aside from going to doctor's offices and going to the uh, supermarket, mm -hmm. my last actual social occasion was on uh, March 5th at uh, uh, John Anderson's daughter. Mm-hmm. So that was, wait, what, that was in, that was in February or March? That was March 5th, March 5th okay. That was a real scary day, March mm -hmm. 5th. And that was like the last time I actually went out. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually remember that for you. Um, and I was actually a little nervous about that whole situation with you. I remember. Oh, I thought, oh that was when I took the train down, and I was really freaking out on the train. It was literally a packed car, because it was like around, I took the train around the rush hour, like mm -hmm. 5.30 or something. So and when... The car was packed. Everybody was sweaty, and I'm like, I'm sure I'm getting something here. How long... But was it something that you were, like, fearing, or was it something that was just, like, starting to come about on the news? Like, how did you feel about it? It was starting to come about on the news. Okay, so it still wasn't, like, something that, you know, was a big deal. It was just kind of, like, a word to be spread, like. Yeah, there was word something like, you know, it's a very contagious uh, virus. Those were the words they used, actually contagious? I don't know if that's the words they used, but I felt, I felt, I had a feeling. You know, they gave me the impression that it was very contagious. Mm -hmm. It spreads very easily. Okay. On that trip, I'm like, if anyone coughs, like, forget about it. Like, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I was trying to cover where did, it. Where did you get that information from? Was that something that you had heard on the news, or, like, did you know that from, like, one of your friends that, like, I know you have friends that live in other countries, did, like, you know... I think I just read about it in my, you know, my daily news digest that I read. Mm-hmm. So that was March 5th. Okay. Yeah, so March, March 5th, um, I believe that was... March 7th was a Saturday, so that was, like, a Thursday. That's funny, because, um... That's funny, because that was the first day that it hit me. Really? Same day, yeah. Be so, because I know that was a Thursday. So, my my story, when it really came, like, hit home, was, you know, I play poker, like, and I like to go to these games, and it's something I do. Um, yeah. You know, I like to get together with the same people. It's well, nice that... Sorry? No, I, I know it is because I, I know I, I just have a weird thing about dates. Don't ever question my thing about dates. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you no, should I be. Know you're a, a, a idiot savant when it comes to calendar. I do, and I can actually tell you like other years about weird dates. I, I don't know where it comes from. I just have like. I don't know, mnemonic devices for weird things. and But this this day I remember because I, I, I'm very, um, in, I very much appreciate my poker game. Because I like to see those people, regardless if uh, we're all good players, we're all going to either make money, not make money. It's going to go up and down and up and down. We're all... Some people are a little bit up, some people are a little bit down, but it's more about, for me, it was, it's more about the social experience, um, and I love the, the game I have in Williamsburg, and I've been playing there for a while, and I love the people, and they treat me like a queen, you know, I'm the only girl that goes, they're so nice to me, they always are like, what can we do for you, you know. I, I can leave things there, and they have their own little, they have their own little, um, uh, <laughs> area of, like, things I've left there. You know, like, a little, like, like, CJ lost and found. It's really, really funny, and, you know, I look, and it, it's really, really funny. They're just very, very good to me, and that day, I was there playing, and I was seated in a seat, that was facing the television. And the television's like on the wall, kind of like a bar. Um, it's like, you know, pretty high up, but like I was the one facing it and it was on mute. And we're all playing poker and I'm starting to, you know, we're all being very careful about, you know, using the, the hand sanitizer. And, oh, really? oh yeah, I mean, at this point, yeah. But we're still kind of laughing at it in a way. You know, yeah. like we're still not, it hasn't hit home yet. So we're still like, I understand that some of the things that are the most, you know, contagious. I mean, please, I've been going to Atlantic City and Las Vegas for so long. I know that there's nothing 
That can get you sick. Nothing has more germs on it than money and chips and cards. I know. Like those three things. So at least we're not dealing with money. We're just dealing with the chips and the cards. So so we're so we're we're having this game and we're all starting to feel like we're passing around the hand sanitizer all the time. They, the, the person that runs the game, his name is Chris. He keeps saying that he's been uh, running through the chips through like a big, uh, you know, dishwasher, if you will. And we're all feeling okay. And then all of a sudden I'm sitting by the TV and I see it on mute. I'll never forget the moment. And I say to Chris, I said, did, did I just see that? Like, am I insane or did I just see that? Like, the words I just saw underneath the screen. And he goes, what? What would you see? And I'm like, just turn around and look at that TV. And, and, and in a second, they'll probably play it again. And a couple of seconds later, they played it again. It said, the NBA is shut down. The NBA is shut down. <laughs> and this was in March. This was... A couple of days before March Madness, where every single bar gets the optimum amount of money for that month, with along with St. Patty's Day, that's like their biggest month, you know, besides going into Christmas, you know, that's it. Like, that's their, and, and there's so much to it. The commercials, the players, the, you know, yeah. and I, I just, and I, I, I couldn't believe I never heard anything like that in my whole life. You know, I'm 37. I never heard a whole, the NBA is going to be shut down. And then they said after that, we're shutting down all baseball so in, for, until further notice. And I'm like, oh my God, this is actually, and that was the moment that I realized it was real. I won some money. I had... It was, I left the game early enough to take the subway home. I was right off the J, right off the L. It's a beautiful ride home. And I went, I think I'm just going to get in a cab. Because now I'm getting freaked out. And I got a, I got freaked out. I went home. I've been out since for like a couple of doctor appointments. But that was the moment I realized shit just got real. Yeah. I think everyone has a moment where they realize shit just got real. You know, when the NBA just shuts down their entire season in in March Madness, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, since then, it's been, you know. Um, so, I just want to tell anyone that's watching right now that I have very, very positive news. My brother is doing fantastic. He is a survivor of the coronavirus, and I have an exclusive interview with him tomorrow, and I'm very, very excited about it because he is such a introvert, and he laughed at me when I asked about this, but I said, you're doing this, you're doing this, and so we're doing it, and so I think it's very, very important that people realize, understand, this is like a foreign there's a foreign disease to people. People have no idea how to feel about any of this because not only are the symptoms so different for everybody, there's like little kids don't even feel anything and they can be spreaders of the disease. It's like a riddle wrapped in a disease. It's just insane and no one really knows the answers. So I just think that to get as much data from each and every person. And I'm so, he has agreed to also, after he does the interview with me, that he's going to donate his plasma, which is in, they really, really need it. Um, I don't know if, do you know the reason, Antonella, why? Or I'm sure the viewers here don't know why. Uh, I think, I think they test the, they look for the antibodies. No, no, let me just, let me just explain to you then. Um, Cause I just learned this myself. Um, so what happens is you have certain, um, blood after you get over a disease that is very, very strong to fight that disease. 
so they can use that blood to a person that can come into the hospital that's more similar to him. You can't really use it for like an old person who's like dying on a ventilator, like all that. But you can use it for a person to get a blood transplant and then they all of a sudden are um, have the antibodies to be the same as him to now knock like to knock out that disease at that moment it does not last forever you know what i'm saying like it's not like that person is immune forever after that but during their time of sickness when they're in the hospital for certain human beings there are certain people yes there are certain people that can get through that um so it's a it's a very you know small uh, it's not like the, the, like a big saturated group of people. It's a very small, minute group that is probably very similar to him. Um, and, but they, but there's so many, I mean, what is it? 4,000 people in the hospital right now, just in my neighborhood. I'm sure they'll find somebody that it can work for, for him. Yeah. So he's agreed after he does this interview tomorrow that he's going to, um, uh, donate that. Uh, I, I have a place for him where, where he can go, and I'm very happy that at least he, you know, I mean, he's a hero in a way. It was, his symptoms were very similar to um, Chris Cuomo's. If you watch his, yeah, have you heard him on um, CNN talking to his brother? Yeah, yeah, like chills. Mm-hmm, and, uh, yep, yep. Felt very much... Sorry, say it again. He he felt the words that he used were he felt like his body was having a fight with itself. Those were the words that he used in a text to me that night. In a text to me that night, he said, "It feels like my body is having a war with itself." And I'm like, and I could tell that he was completely hallucinating. He kept texting me weird... Oh, he was texting me things that did not make sense all night. He had a high temperature, right? Um, it, it wasn't... It's, it's not, it wasn't so... If you, it wasn't so much about that. I'm sure he did. Um, but it was just... Apparently... I'm not a scientist here, but it seems like Chris Cuomo and him are about the same age. They're the same kind of... Um, they're in shape. They don't have any, like, prior, you know, illness, you know, prior, you know, stuff going on. They're in good shape. They're, like, you know, big, strong men. Um, not fat, not obese, don't have, like, asthma or diabetes, yada, yada. So, they both even live in the same area. They both live in the same, like, neighborhood. Like, he lives, whatever. So, it, but he was completely hallucinating, and it sounds to me like the the worst comes at night. So they feel good during the day, and then at night, it's like the evil creeps in. That's what Chris Cuomo said, and as soon as Chris Cuomo said it, my brother texted me, and he was like, wow, someone gets it. And my brother is, yeah, yeah. And if you know my brother, you're not, you know that he's not one to exaggerate, kind of, he's not like me. He's not a type A personality. He's just, an, you know... He just wants to be left alone and he's, you know, but he was like, bam, that's me. Like he, he really felt it. And if you hear what Chris, Chris Cromo said, he was kind of explaining this hallucination he had about how his brother, the, you know, the, the governor, um, was like a, a, like a ballet dancer and waving a wand trying to, trying to make all this go away. That's what he said um, on um, on TV while Mario Cuomo was doing his, you know, daily briefing. He, you know, got Chris Cuomo on the FaceTime, and that's what he said. And my brother went, bam, my brother went, bam, that's me. But, I, but tomorrow when I speak to him, because I'm very curious about that I have not... My brother has not been well enough to speak about things like this. I want to ask him these questions. And he said that he's ready tomorrow to talk about them. The onset. Like, what was the first moment that you felt sick? Like, when was it? What time of day? Like, what was the date? 
what you know what what was going on did you still go to work did you still walk your dog were you still because I know that there was a moment that look I don't want to out my brother right now but I am but he was not feeling well but he did not think this was before the coronavirus really became the forefront of the news and he was really? still going to the dog park and walking his dog and I was I was the one to be like you know, you gotta, you gotta really get away from this. You can't be so public right now. You're gonna get a lot of people sick. And he was like, nah, nah, nah. and I understand. Like, um, you know what he had, right? You have no idea. This was before. This was. This was around, yeah, like this May, this March fifth, like area. This is when it like all kind of came to fruition that like this was actually a big deal. So when he started saying that he wasn't feeling well, I just thought, you're not feeling well. Maybe you ate something bad. Maybe you have the flu. Maybe you have a cold. Maybe you, you know. And then I started thinking to myself after it wasn't going away right away, maybe you have pneumonia, you know, because that's something that's very hard uh, to shake. And then I realized once this uh, whole epidemic came to the forefront of the news, oh, my God, you have coronavirus. And he was the perfect, every single thing that they say. Um, from the, you know, and his biggest symptoms, which he'll tell tomorrow, but his biggest symptom was nausea, stomach issues. And I've never heard my brother ever complain about stomach issues ever. So he really, he kept saying like he felt like there was a river at the bottom of his belly that felt like a river of enzymes. Like, I guess if when you're really, I guess the best way I could put it is like, when you're really, really hungover and you have all these, like, you know, bile, this disgusting bile, and you just need to get it out. But he, like, couldn't really get it out. Like, it just stayed there. Like, it just stayed there. Like, and, he had a poison in him and he wanted to inject it? Do you know what I mean by, like, when you have, like, that disgusting bile, like, kind of brewing? A brewery yeah. of bile at the bottom of your tummy. Like, it's just nasty. So that's the way he kept describing it to me. And he, I, he really never, in my life, um, he never really had that bad nausea. And especially for, if you have nausea, it's, you know, by what you've done to yourself. So it's self-inflicted. You've been hung over. You took too many drugs, blah, blah, blah. And so this shit goes away and you know what it is. When you didn't do anything, you weren't out drinking, you weren't partying, you weren't taking drugs, you didn't go to a concert, you didn't, you know, go to a fucking festival. It's scary as well. So that in itself, the fear of not knowing any of what it was, we will lead me into a couple of days, like two weeks later when he started complaining about, not complaining, I don't want to use that word, when he started talking about, um that he was having a little bit of trouble breathing, he did, he couldn't pinpoint if it was from anxiety. Because that's so scary to be, to be sick for that many days and have nobody come to your aid. During this epidemic, when I can't even go to his apartment and help because I'm not allowed. Right? Think about like what that's like. So you're all the fuck alone. So I think the anxiety, he couldn't tell if it was the um, the anxiousness that was making him not be able to breathe or it was an actual thing. And so well, to... That's what I feel. I feel I have difficulty breathing and I, it, it scares me whether I have it or not. But I think it's anxiety. I think that that's, I think that exactly what you're saying right now is probably how he was feeling. It was just he was just racked with anxiety. When you're sick for that amount of days, I've never been sick for that amount of days, um, and not had anyone come to my to my aid to take care of me. And you can't even. Uh, he he was com said he couldn't even really read the articles online. Is his eyes would be out of focus because uh, it would make him so nauseous, and so it. Who does? It can easily die in that condition. It, it can get worse. It got worse, you know? Womp womp. <laughs> it's the truth. 
to to anyone who's listening here, you have to know the uh, situation between me and Antonella. She's Debbie Downer. I'm. I like to uh, have a the cup is full, but anything I say, it's always like you'll be dead. Eh, hey, you'll die. Eh, hey, you know. So that's what. So we'll have. I'll have. I'll have a lot more information when I speak to him tomorrow about this because I, he's probably has a wealth of knowledge that he has not been able to speak about because he was that sick. Like he could not speak. The only person he was speaking to was me for one reason. Do you want to hear the one reason while he was, why he was talking to me and nobody else? I said, do you want to hear the one reason that he was talking to me and nobody else? Yes. Because I had some leverage. I said, if you do not pick up the phone, I just show up. <laughs> so the fear of the fear of me showing up was so great that he knew every day he had to get back to me or else it would be a knock, knock, knock with me with a hazmat. At his place, yeah. you know, ready to fucking annoy him. Was he afraid for your health or he was just like so sick of No, he didn't want to. Nobody, when you're sick, the last thing you want to see is your little sister. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him, if you don't pick, if I don't hear from you every day, I'm just going to show up. And I meant it. So that fear instilled with him. I was the only person he would call. So I liked that. I had a little bit of leverage. So I was able to get in touch with my, you know, crazy Jewish mom and dad and say, hey, you know, he's fine. He's alive. He's good. They're like, how come he's calling you and not me? You know, my mom said, how come he's calling you and not me? I said, because he knows that little sister's going to show up and be like, Corona persona, what's up? And, you know, he that fear of me just showing up was so great that I was able to communicate with him. So let's just talk about, uh, let's change the subject for a second. And, yeah, but yeah, let's talk about what we actually, oh, I mean, look, we have, a, we have an Indian chief and we're both aware of it. But what's going on right now is something that I really want to like, I, I really wish I could just, can I just start this video again so I can talk to these viewers because it's so freaking important that everyone knows what's going on? I mean, I'm not yeah. gonna, but maybe, should I? I don't know. But listen yeah. up. Pause it for now. Pause it. No, just listen up, okay? Because this you is gotta, so... You gotta get to just the listen. Point. Antonella, yeah. Antonella. What? So, it's very, very, very important that everyone just understands that... Our president right now has some great people right next to him, giving him fantastic advice. Um, Anthony Ferrucci, even Mike Pence, it like knows what's in the loop. Everyone knows that the best thing that we can do, the only the only weapon that we have until we have a vaccination, is to just. Sorry? It's stay the fuck in the house. It's to stay the fuck home. Just to... Thank yeah. you. Thank you for finishing my sentence as if, like, <laughs> no one knew where I was going with that. Yeah, but he's the fucking president. He has a little bit more responsibility than just telling everyone to stay in the house. You know? And that's where he's failing. Well, that's where... I mean, what, do you think I wasn't getting there? one that says to you that you're being too slow in your actions. Okay. Well, I don't think that any everyone really realizes what is going on because, so basically everybody has a shelter in place um, action except for 10 states. And the 10 states, could you could you stop for a sec? You're not helping. The 10 states are all Super, super red states. They're all Republican people that kiss his ass. And they do not want to have this because they do not want their economy to tank. But they don't realize that if they don't follow these rules, they're going to get it and spread it. And it's going, 
it's going to get there. And he, so can I, can I please? And then you can go? Because that's, this is just being insane. I mean, so, first of all, he, you know, the things that he said today about that, meanwhile, everybody on the podium is saying, you know, di so distancing, distancing, staying at home, staying at home, staying at home. And the truth is, you know what? I really, really feel for him a little bit. He's very, very conflicted because he, he keeps saying, yes, do that, do that, do that, do that. Stay, you know, stay home, stay home. And then the next second he says, we need to open. We need to open. We need the government to open. And that I understand because I do understand that one thing that he says that the the problem is the cure for the problem is even worse than the problem itself. And I do get that. I do understand that. Part of me does feel that way, the way we all feel. There's a part of every single young person that goes, screw them, let them all get sick, let them go so we can make the government work again so we're not, you know, in debt for the rest of our lives and, you know, we can eat and not, and, and move on. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So basically what we need to do is we all need to shelter in place we all need to have our social distancing and just get that done with and that's the end of it and he is kissing ass to these 10 governors of these 10 states you know, both of the both of the Dakotas, we got Wyoming, we got it's all those middle blocky states that are just ridiculous and yes yeah, some of them don't have any cases but they're going to and what he said today was the dumbest thing that he's ever said he kept saying 150 countries have this he was like oh of course he always talks in a way that he says you didn't even know there was 150 countries it was like yeah i did actually you know, he always wants to, like, let you know, like, the information he's just learning as if he's, like, a child. Like, I, I know. I already knew that. And it's funny the way he said, oh, people didn't even know there were 150 countries. Really? Because you're the president and I'm just a fucking citizen and I knew that. So, he said, California is like a country. New York is like a country. You know, and so everyone can make their own decision. The problem with that is it's not true. We can go back. I can go back and forth to California as much as I want right now. Right. I can drive in there and drive out, drive in, drive out, drive in, drive out. And that's the biggest, that's the problem with everything right there is he just does not understand that. He just does not understand that we're not, he'll do anything to make his, He's still playing the politics game. He's still campaigning. He's still campaigning. He's still with these people, these stupid freaking governors that want to keep... Because they don't have any cases yet. Guess what? Today is the 4th. I, today is a Saturday. By next Saturday, I'm going to have this exact show. Everything will be different. Everything. They're going to have way more cases than New York. Way more. They're going to be going down like flies. And the fact that our president knows this, he actually does know this, but he's still campaigning. And he just is so conflicted because he keeps saying everything's about loss of life. We want less loss of life. We want that, you know, but he can't help himself. He just needs to keep campaigning. He can't help himself by patting on himself on the back at every fucking moment. That's a whole other ball game, but this is, this is what I think. Yeah, he is campaigning. He wants to be Congress. He wants to be president. He wants to be president. He wants to Even if it means people fucking dying, you know, and 
Abs like absolutely. I mean, and their reasoning is like, they're very like, a they're very, these are very, these are states that have a lot of, they're, they're, they're Jesus-y states. So they're like, live and let live, especially we're coming close to Easter and Palm Sunday and all that crap. And they're like, uh-uh, oh, hell no. They're like literally not even talking that much about the, today, they weren't talking as much about the economy as they were about things like that. Which was even more fucking annoying. Because at least I can fucking understand if you're talking about how you can't feed your children if you can't work. But they're literally talking about not being able to have an egg, egg hunt on Easter with their fucking family and going to services. You know? If you You're saw right. him, did you, it, I, I, I already know right now by talking to you that you were not watching him on stage today. And that's what it is, it's a fucking stage. Um, I already know that you didn't. Because I know, I know what you're saying, it does not correlate to what I saw today. You would know exactly what I'm talking about and I wouldn't have to explain anything. And usually me and you are like in sync. And I could tell you didn't. Um, it was the weirdest shit. And it went on. Today was the longest one of these task force um, uh, meetings that they ever had. It was an hour and 43 minutes. Because he every he was so going back and forth. And back. one second he's just all about the science and social distancing and listen to the scientists. And, da -da 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 -da. and then one second later he's like, no, you know, in the other side of his brain. And he just, and he only... And and be and, and and in your wavering, if you're campaigning during an epidemic, you're gonna lose everything. You cannot have it both ways. You can't. You gotta stick to the facts, stick to science, and if he's going to play that game, he's gonna lose. And you're gonna see how he's gonna lose. I don't I mean that these people are going to die in the by the dozens, by the thousands. And it's gonna be great. And I kinda fucking hope it. I want it. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds did, of thousands. I mean did you hear about did you hear that governor uh in Georgia what he said today? Did you hear? He said today I'm officially going to shut down my state because I didn't realize that you can have coronavirus and not have symptoms and not show symptoms. symptoms. All that. I mean, that's on top of that. How can you not know that? Zariah is seven and she knows that. And she's not. And I know, I know kids that are literally six and seven, I know, I mean, that know that. Like, how can you be in charge of an entire state and not know something as fundamental as I, and he said, quote unquote, I did not know that you can have this virus and have Show no symptoms. Show no symptoms. Forget about even the fact. Forget about even the fact. Obvious. It's obvious that everyone is that has it can be um, contagious. We all know that, but can show no symptoms. I mean, Yes, but the, I, yes, look, there's a million reasons why he should have shut the whole state down. But the fact that he actually said that he, he actually said, I did not know that. Now, there's either one of two things. Either you're the biggest fucking moron in the world or you're lying. Which, who, which one of these people do you want to be? I haven't thought about that, that he might be lying. Well, which one of these people do you want to be? I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I don't think he's lying. I actually think he didn't think he didn't realize that. I think he thought 
that each and every person that gets it gets really sick and then we just kind of quarantine them and we all go around go and do you know and you go to you go to your you know finance job and you go to the ranching job and you you know cut down trees and you you know get the garbage out and we'll let that sick person be on their own in quarantine he did not realize that there I really believe that he didn't realize that for every one person that gets sick, there's like seven people that have this disease that don't even feel it. I might have it right now. And in fact, I do think that there's a good chance that I, I would love to see if I've had it. You know, I am somebody that, um, well, I've been thinking, a, what? Exactly. Good luck getting a test. Is right. I would love to be able to. I am jealous of my brother right now. He knows he had it. And so from now on, he can go anywhere he wants. He can do anything he wants. He can help everyone he wants. If I had the test, I should be able to find out if I could, if I even did have it. I was very, very sick in February for like five days. And I felt like I was in that hallucinatory period too. Like, so who the fuck knows? Maybe I did have it. And if I didn't have, and if I didn't, if that wasn't the time I did have it, maybe I have it right this second. And I just don't even know it because my body does not respond to that. And there's a good chance of that because I am. So I've been, I was reading up on, um, there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about certain blood types very much um, being more prone to showing symptoms. Everybody is pretty equal to catching it, right? That's an agreed, you know, comment, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but to actually get the symptoms and, like, feel sick, right. I was it's uh, I was reading an article, and a lot of people are very, feel very strongly, like, some really, um, you know, great people that are, you know, in charge of, like, disease control, and this, uh, somebody I know that actually is a professor at University of Delaware for disease control feels very strongly that certain blood types are more prone to feeling the symptoms than others. So my, sorry? That's interesting. Yeah, so my blood type, because I'm B, I'm always B positive, um, is one of the blood types that you will just not feel it. That's what they think. So if you're O or one of the A's, that you will, you know, feel it more than any one of the B's. Just B's, not A, B, not, you know, just a B, B negative or B plus that you will not feel it as much. I mean, I'm still completely um, as, as just as susceptible to, to, uh, to, to get it, but not to feel anything. So, I mean, who knows? I could be sitting with it right now. We, I, or I don't think right now because I've been so careful and quarantined myself and crazy. This is probably like the healthiest I've ever been in terms of just germs and everything and cleanliness and we're, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like kind of weird how I actually feel. I haven't been taking the subway every day. Like I'm probably like the healthiest I've ever been in my life right now. I'm probably like the bicentennial woman right now because of the fear. But oh, I'm still. Don't worry. I, I've been. I'm. 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 I'm good. But no, I'm just saying that. Like um, I might have gotten it already. Right. Maybe like last week I had it and I just didn't know. So there's got to be more tests for that. And if there are, then I'm happy to take that test and donate my plasma to these things that can, you know, help people that do have it. Because, these, yeah. what you know, what's going on in these hospitals is, you know, and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so angry at these people that are not self-quarantined. They're the biggest motherfucking pieces of shit in the world. I mean, you know, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, our, our, my, my, both, both of my grandparents, both of my grandpas, both fought in wars 
okay? And yeah. my grandma and my great aunt are Holocaust survivors. I mean, so we, but they went, my grandpas both went to war. They were asked to fight for their country and hold guns and kill and travel to places they didn't know and just to hold a gun. I mean, are you fucking kidding me, right? I mean, just all this stuff. And all these fucking fuckers are asked to do is to Netflix and chill on a fucking couch. All we want you to do is Netflix and chill. Just sit fucking tight. And they can't even do that. It is disgusting. And I do... I have seen a lot of shit living in Brooklyn and I bike ride. I have seen so many people out and about like it's fucking partying on New Year's Eve. Like it's like the end of the world partying. I have seen it all. I mean, in the parks, brown bagging it, beers from their, you know, I've seen it all. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. Think about it. I mean, it's not just these kids got kicked out. All the kids got kicked out of their college, right? Like, we're sent home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're not just dealing with that. Schools are closed. So now we're dealing with high school kids, college kids. We're dealing with so many fucking age groups that are not in school. So they don't have to wake up for anything seven days a week. You know? And... They should have made... That's a great idea. They should do that. They should make them just make masks all day long or be the per people that that make the deliveries or make the deliveries for all the restaurants. There's a million things they can do, you know? Yes. And you know if they got the coronavirus that they wouldn't die. They would just feel, you know, my brother's 41. They're half that age. They're 21. They're 17. They would feel nothing. But I'm just yeah. saying, of course, keep them safe. But if they did get it, they have a great chance they'd be fine. Blowing by it. Uh -huh. They'd be fine. We gotta. It's such bullshit. They're doing. They're just. Uh, I don't know. They're just doing nothing. And but being the cockroaches of the city, they're just going out and then just dispersing. And feeding this disease that they could have and not know they have and have not no uh, you know no symptoms and just giving it to all the old people. You have no idea how often sitting in my house I hear, um, you know, the trucks go by. Trucks. The ambulances go by. It's pretty much. It's pretty much every two minutes. Wow. See, I'm, I'm in a whole different world up here. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you're in a very, um, you're in a more wealthy area. So it is a, there is an exact indirect, cor there is an, is a, it's an indirect correlation, if you want to call it like that, indirect. So let's, let's make a direct correlation, okay? So let's make it easy. I'm going to just like okay. use my hand. The less money you have, the more you are spreading this virus. Right. Okay? Yeah. Period. For yeah. so many reasons. You give me a re I've, I've got many, many reasons. Number one. Okay? Those are the people that can't afford to just stay home. And so they still have to go to their job. So let's just say they're MTA workers. Let's just say they're, they're garbage workers. They're postal people. They're for something for the city. They're just, cl whatever they're doing, they still have to show the fuck up. Yeah, some are essential. Okay? That's the first thing. Number two, most of the jobs that very rich white people have can do from home. Let's just say you're somebody yeah. that works on Wall Street, okay? Let's say you're somebody that's, you can do a lot of these things from home. Okay, so that's the second thing. Most of yeah. the most people that ha that are in the um, lesser bracket, 
what are you gonna, if you're a garbage man, how are you gonna work from home? What are you gonna GPS where the garbage is? Like, come on, you're not doing that, okay? So that's the second reason, okay? Number three, they are just not as informed, okay? They're not as in, they do not have as much, uh, they don't watch the news, they're not as college educated, they might not even be able to afford just regular basic cable to watch CNN. You know, they don't know what's going on. And then there are so many more reasons I can keep on going all day long. They can't afford childcare, so their kid is running rampant, and then they're getting it from their kid, right? They can they can't afford to um, go to like the Whole Foods and get like you know three hundred dollars worth of groceries at one second. They're still going to the, the deli every day, and they're not they're not. That's true. They're so I can keep going. There's that's like seven reasons I gave you. I could keep going all day long. Um, yeah. They don't have cars, so they're traveling. You know. Yeah, buses and trains. Yeah, um, they are. Um, they don't um, have, um, the, the, they have not bought the hand sanitizer, the mask, all those things, which are now like seven, it's like $20 for a little bottle of hand sanitizer now. They're not doing it. Okay, but that's you. But you don't have a family. There's, you live in a very rich white area. A lot of people do have families, right? They are buying that. Well, forget about, okay, forget about your block, okay? Don't think about your block. Think about your whole area. Think about a one mile, two mile radius. And then think about my two mile radius in a circle, okay? My two mile radius encompasses brownstones and businesses and Times Square and office buildings, you know. It's, a it's rich white people that live there, period. The people that live here, yeah. That's it. There's nothing more to say to that about that. No one's going, that's it. No one's going to work. Forget about going to work. Who lives there? Who lives there? Also, you have tourists here. You have hotels. Forget, there's no tourism going on. You're being an idiot right now and it's that's pissing me saying. off. That's what I'm saying. Where you live, everyone that lives in a two mile radius of where you are lives, okay? Because everyone's just living right now in their house, okay? There's nobody hanging out at hotels right now for a day and then traveling to the next place and it's not happening. Everybody that lives in a two mile radius from you is a rich white person. 95%. Everyone that lives around me right now is a poor Latino or black person. Okay? Right. So get your shit yeah. to like, do not, why are you even? Yeah, I get it. No, no. Okay, so I don't know why. You. I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know why you're you kind of a sort of arguing me about something. I'm just, I'm just trying to bring a point that I don't hear. It's different. It's just a different world of me compared to yours. Yes, I'm aware. I'm disconnected from it, really, because I don't see people hanging out, you know, like in your neighborhood. Okay. Well, the, first of all, they're not hanging out in my exact neighborhood because my neighborhood, well, my street, when you walk outside my door, it's too yeah. big of a two-way road and too lit up. No one's hanging out. Yeah. Okay? Right. I'm talking about when I ride my bike and I start riding around for about a half a mile to a mile, it's party fucking central. Okay? Okay. That's, yeah. not, ha that's not happening by you. Now, it might be. It might be with these white people hanging out by you, let's just say going all the way to the water. Let's just say that they're on the lower west side, they're hanging out by the water, you know, these kids that are home from college, maybe they sneak out, maybe they're hanging out together. If that does happen and they're hanging out, right, they still are in a lower bracket of, like, giving into each other because they're going back to their houses and it's just not running rampant over there. Yeah. It's just not. So, you know, it's, it's just right now, it's just these people are being so selfish and disgusting and, you know, unfortunately, I have a lot of footage around my neighborhood, but I'm too scared to do anything with it because... You don't think it's... You don't think it's... Uh, sorry. I think that... I think... I know that they'd probably find me and kill me if I posted it. I know that. So I have to be very careful. And I don't think that me doing anything about that will 
alter any of their behaviors. I've already called 311. I've done everything I could. They're not going to alter their behavior. They're not going to do diddly shit. The only thing that will make them change is if the law, if, is if we make, I spoke to many, many cops in this area. They said we cannot enforce distancing, right? So if I, if that will actually become something that becomes a quick law, I mean, you can make, you, President Trump does have the ability to make something into a law real quick, to change things for the better or the good. He does. So if he could just quickly say, okay, if you, if you don't social, I think it might even be through the governor. If you so, if, if you are caught in a party like that, you can get a ticket. People are scared of tickets. No one wants a ticket. Okay. Tickets can be up to two, you know, let's say for every time that you're caught in a party with around a lot of people, you know, that you get a $250 ticket. If they knew that, and that was something that was given out, trust me, they would not be doing it. And that's what I want to see happen. Billy was given $300, 300 euro uh, fines if you were riding your bicycle out on the street. And then that's great. I love it. I love the way he was yeah. yelling at the whole country like that. You know, it's, it's fantastic. And it's just, a no, it's just, you know, we, that's what should be done. I mean, how can you enforce something to this age group? You're right, get them in their pocketbook. Hit it, yeah. If you give a ticket to, I mean, these 16 year olds, 17 year olds, all the way up to like, you know, 30 or give them a ticket, they will not come out again. I guarantee you. They're not going to do it. They're not going to come out again. They're not. You, That's the only so thing that. Think, hold on. You think uh, they're doing this out of ignorance? They don't realize that they're. No, they want to, yeah, it's a combination. It's a combination. They want to hang out. They think they're invincible. And guess what? They are. They don't, they don't care that they're going to spread it to the older, more vulnerable people. And they, they're just not interested. They don't care. All they care about is, when you're that age, all you care about is friends, hooking up, partying, getting fucked up. That's all you care about. And they're going to see a big, big issue later on because of social media. I do think that later on, all the pictures they can maybe post of them hanging out, any person that's an employer, I think should be able to look at their like feeds. And if they've ever been out during this time, I think it's almost like second degree murder. It's attempted second degree murder. And they should not be able to have the ability to get hired. And I think that they're... I, I'm very pissed off about this. I can go off about it all day long. I'm very, very upset because every single one of us that's doing a good job and staying inside and changing our lives and making sure... For each one of us that's doing that, one of them is negating one of us. And it is so fucked up. And all we're asking is for them to stay home. We're not asking them to fight a war like my grandparents actually putting their ass on the line in Vietnam or, you know, fighting, world, you know, the Germans in World War I. We're literally just asking them to fucking watch some Hulu, okay, or cuts around on their phone or play Candy Crush on their, on their computer or whatever. Just stay the fuck on your couch. We're not asking for anything more, and it's so messed up, and I think that they need to be, I think that they need to be taken accounted for. They need to have consequences the same way that the draft was back then, that anyone 18, year old, uh, 18 and older could be drafted into war. If you're 18 and up and you're doing something like this, you need to have consequences that can maybe last for a lifetime. I, I I really think that they, these things should be penalized to the absolute most, uh, you know, to the to the 20,000th degree. It is disgusting. And, you know, it's, I, I, I really don't know where to begin. And honestly, I'm a little bit scared. You know, I was on my bike. I saw a lot of stuff. I filmed some shit. I'm nervous to what to do with it. I know that they saw me. I know they'll find me. They're just scary motherfuckers. But I already called 311, so... 
you know, what else can I do? I guess I'm going to start. I'm going to start trying. You know, I already tried to get in touch with Cuomo with 311. There was a, uh, when I called 311, they actually said, would you like uh, this to go to um, your governor, Cuomo? And I said, yes, of course. And so they asked for my email and my phone number. And I, and I said an exact complaint. They said, he'll get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he called me today. He said, hey, CJ, what's up? How you doing? He, he said, yeah, tell me about these fuckers in your neighborhood because I want to get them. And by the way, let me, let me stop over and have a popsicle with you and let's have a Corona, Marti let's have a Corona Martini together. That's what happened. What? Okay. Well, um, we have not been that intimate yet. He just called me and asked um, what was going on, and he asked if he, if we could hang out soon. Um, so um, I invited him over, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some uh, coffee tomorrow at my house and talk about all my grievances about what's going on in my neighborhood. I mean, come on. I I don't know what to do. I would look. I don't know. That's the thing about what's going on right now. There is not an exact. There is not an exact, like, I, I want to start a new platform. Not Twitter, not your Facebook, not whatever. Just devoted to this and about these kind of things. And, like, how we can improve the situation, what we can do. You know, I don't really need a lot of, like, oh, I, I wrote a song to lift y'all up. I mean, more, let's get something done. You know, let's find the fuckers that are not obeying by these new rules while all the rest of us do, and let's get them. Like, though, I, I need a new platform like that. And so, you know, why can't I create something like that? So, um, I want to call it, I want to call it the, uh, I, I already know what I want to call it because I came up with this today in the shower where I come up with all my fantastic ideas. Um, I want to call it the Corona persona and each person can, you know, be, you know, you want to be a badass, let's be a badass. You want to be, um, you know, an uplifter, be an uplifter. You want to be, but there's no room for anyone that is not going to be on board because we need to be on board because I need to know, I need to know that I can see my friends soon and I can play a soccer game and I can go to a concert and I can see my family and I can go to a wedding and I can fucking hug my fucking brother and I can hug my family and see the people I love and they're blocking me from that so there's no more of this bullshit no more this is nice girl anymore so the per corona persona it's like you're gonna be a badass or, you know, or, you know, what is your place in this area to help out with making this happen? You know, because that's what we need to do. I mean, the scientists can find a vaccine, unfortunately. We need to get rid of all fucking presidents. He's such an asshole. Well, you know what? That's not going to happen. So let's have goals that actually can, can be reached. No one's listening to him, I'm telling you. If you heard him today, no one was even listening to him. Nobody was. I have a question. I have a question. I have an answer. You didn't hear my question. I'm sure I will. Okay. Here I am, the Corona persona, here at your service.
think it's a waste of your time. I think if you want to be part of the per Corona person, it's a huge waste of your time. I know what you're saying. I do. I do think that liking him is just kind of a religion. Like that's it. You know, no one's budging. I have not, I have not, it's very rare that even through this and all of his, you know, complete beyond mistakes about this whole thing. Um, it's very rare to see anyone switch over, but I have seen it. There was one guy. Did you see it in, in, is she a friend of yours or did you see it on the news? No, no. I saw something um, on uh, the news that there was um, a woman, she was married to a vet, and um, um, he was making light of the whole situation, so he w kept going out and doing what he was doing, and he got sick and he died. And that was her husband, so she yeah. keeps, she keeps, so she said on the news, you know, if he didn't make light of it, I listened to everything that Trump has ever said, so I just, he, he made light of it, so, so did I, and my husband died. So, she, obviously, she has changed over, but that's the only single person that I've ever heard change over. One person. So, do not waste your, t you're wasting your time with if somebody believes in Buddha or Jesus or Allah, whatever, you're wasting your time. What you need, if you want to be part of the Corona Persona new movement, all we can do is get these. All we can do is get these fuckers that are not following the directions. So there's got to be either they get a ticket, they get pictures of them, and they're just on like a new, like I'm too nervous to post what I have to be somehow linked to me. So what if there's just this anonymous place that we just keep on putting photos, pictures, everything on there of people, and yeah, it's a great idea, and in fact... I'm going to say it right now, okay? If that does happen, if we can do that, and if we can get some big, something to, um, you know, kind of like put money into us, you know, someone that will like, uh, so for every per person that puts a photo or, you know, a video, they get, you know, some kind of reward, right? So some kind of, we need, we need some kind of sponsor, whether it be, you know, even someone from Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, to Nike, to Sephora, whatever. Something that they can get a sponsor for like maybe a dollar a post, two dollars a post, whatever. And, you know, even if they're, even if they're, even if they're lying and it really isn't, at least it'll instill the fear that's so great that... People won't do it anymore. It'll be something that's like officially not cool. Yeah. Because right. now your face has been plastered all over the place and it's not cool. You know, and I think that that's what needs to happen. I think it's a great idea. I mean, so I'm going to come out right now and ask, hey, if anyone wants to get involved with the, you know, Corona Persona Task Force, um, we are going to bust these motherfuckers that for every one of us that's doing the right thing and they're doing the wrong thing, they're just negating one of us. And let's bust them. Let's 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 be done with them. It's enough. Yeah, that's a good idea. Who the fuck you think you are? Who are these, who are these jackasses sequester themselves and not spread it the sooner it'll be over. You just prolong it. I oh, mean, it's just, I mean, they're, they're just really just, the, 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 the amount that they can do, you can, you're one person, 
let's just say you have it, you don't have symptoms, you can literally affect like a whole state. Like, hey, I'm just gonna like drive through Wyoming and maybe like, maybe I'm just gonna like pump my, I'm just gonna like maybe drive, maybe I'm just gonna drive to another state and like even just pump my gas here, buy like a sandwich. You can get that one person sick. You can get a whole fucking state sick. I think they say, Oh, it's way more than that. Do you know, do you know how, I don't know if you know this, um, do you know how it started in Australia? Australia? No. It's, it was, it was, it was one of us. It was, um, it was last year. It was the end of the year. It was a wedding. 75 people were at the wedding. And one American flew there, had the coronavirus, and infected 39 people. They tracked it back to that person. It was on 60 Minutes Australia last Sunday. And that one person that infected that 39 people, for each one of those 39 people, they infect. And that was one day. So, of course, I, when I'm watching this, when I was watching this, and that was like the opener of 60 Minutes Australia, what do you think my first question was? Like, to the, to, like screaming at the TV. My first question, what do you think it was? It was a wedding. To like to the TV when I when you know the opener of the person says this, like you know they, they to 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 get you to keep watching it. They oh. that was like the beginning. My first question when I was, I was I was screaming at the TV, how drunk was this fucker? You know you were at a wedding. What are you fucking taking everyone's drink and drinking it? What are you hugging everybody? Yeah. You're on the dance floor, getting your groove on, hugging everyone. You know, licking every gift. You know, like. It turns out, no. It was just a normal person. It's just that contagious. No, I mean, I wasn't the, I'm sure I wasn't the only person with that initial question because they went into it right away. They were like, you know, the first, if there's 75 people at a wedding and you've gotten 39 sick, it was not in Australia. One white man flew there and fucking fucked up Australia. One guy. Unbelievable. 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 And they interviewed the people at the wedding. So they went from each person to each person at the wedding. And they're like, Do you, one of the women, she looked very similar to like me. She, you know, and they were talking to her through like um, her screen door. And she was like away from it. And they were asking her questions. And they said, do they, and they said, do you even remember him? And she's like, no, I don't, I, I didn't, I, I didn't even meet him. He wasn't at my table. I don't even remember meeting him. That's how contagious something is. And it, oh, by the way, it was an outdoor wedding. Really? Yes. It was on like this beautiful, like, you know, mm -hmm, it was outdoors. It could be anything. Think about it. I mean, there's so many things. You have to keep track of so much shit. That's why, you know, no one's a scientist here. No one knows what's up. Fucking stay at home. Fucking stay at home. All right. Did you uh, see the, go ahead. Did you see that thing I sent you? You send me 20,000 things a day. The sneezing, the coughing? Uh... Yeah, no, 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 no. I already knew. I mean, I know everything about it. I know how many droplets are in the air. Yeah. No, I know that already. I know that already. I actually. You talk loudly. Is there a direct correlation to how loud you are, to how many droplets of spit you have, and how long it stays in the air? Because let me tell you, I'd be the most, I would be the most easy person to spread the virus in the world. That's fine, you know, and I've been so good. I do not, when I'm out the door, I don't even speak. I do whatever I need to do so fucking fast that your head would spin. I have been outside for two seconds. I get whatever I need and I'm back home. I'm, I can barely see out of... I'm so covered up that I have these little two pinholes for eyes that I can barely see anything. What, what, do, you, what do you have? 
Oh, I have ever, I do the whole, you don't even know how, how much I, I do. You don't even know. I look like a mummy. I look like a mummy. Like no one wouldn't even know who I was. I just like, I'm, I'm banned. I have, I have so much gear. It's insane. And then when I come back in my door, I automatically take everything that I have off to nakedness and just jump in the shower. And then I do not touch what I was wearing for days. I still haven't touched what I wore the last time I was out. It was like four days ago. I still haven't touched it. It's in the corner of my... I, it's just still sitting there. I haven't touched it. So, I mean, that's a little bit insane. But knowing that what my brother's gone through, it's really been a big... When you... I think that that is also something that might change the way that these young people feel. Maybe they need to actually see someone die or get really sick. I think when you see it with your own eyes, I think when you, you know, hearing what my brother went through, because it is definitely a crutch being my age, which is young, my health, everything about me, even to my blood type that I have, my lungs are great. I can, you know, I, I run and bike every swim every day. Like, you know, I'm in great shape. I know that I would be able to beat it. And so that is definitely, I will say right away, I mean, it's definitely a crutch. Do I want to infect people? No, but I can understand that little, you know, part of you that it, I get it. But when you, when, when speaking to my brother on a daily basis, sometimes four times a day and hearing the absolute, and I've known him for 37 years and hearing the agony. I never, ever heard him speak like this. Yeah. Hearing that, you just go, you just do not want that. Live or die, you do not want that. Period. You just don't want it. And so you'll do anything to avoid it. And I think that even if you're going to, if you can't, if you cannot grab people by... If, you, if, if people are just going to be selfish and go, oh, I'll be fine, you know, the only way is maybe to scare them with either A, letting, like seeing their lovers, their friends, their family die, or if they actually see somebody get really sick to the point where they're hallucinating, throwing up. I mean, my brother was throwing up like crazy. Like, it was the most... I've never heard him like that. The the, the, the agony, the, the, the just torture. He called it torture, you know, multiple times. And I never heard him speak like that. So I, you know, I think if you're... If people are going to be selfish, the only way to get them to, you know, get on board is to, A, have a ticket. I think the ticket is a great idea. Or B, and B to see that they can actually get really sick and get, and it's agony. You know, it's, 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 you know, these kids think they're invincible. I can't stand them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that your neighborhood is doing what's best, but it's, it's, it's not shocking. Of course they are. They can, you know, they're smarter. They have more money. They have jobs that they can work from home. There's 20,000 reasons why, you know, and then here it's just, it's madness. It's just madness. Um, yeah, well, we're done because we've been on, we've been doing this for an hour and 20 minutes. Who even knows if this is, if we can even post this on, like, I don't even know if you can. Is that too long of a video? Well, if, 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 go ahead. You said he wanted to end it. What do you want to say? I want to say, it just says here that the average single, uh, on average, a single infection is around 60 people per year. Okay. And the average person will go on to infect about two other, two other people within a susceptible population. Yeah. And, and everyone's susceptible. So two people. Yeah. I mean, the way I think about it, the way I described it to, um, I was talking to somebody a little bit younger than me, like 10 years younger than me the other day. And I described it like herpes, you know. Um, it seems like that, which is not life-threatening, but, you know, for and for every person that you kiss, 
the way they described it to me when I was in college, you know, you kiss somebody and that you're kissing basically the whole college because they kiss two people and then they kiss two people and they kiss two people, you know, and the next thing you know, every single person on campus has herpes and that's what happens. And fortunately, fortunately, that won't kill you. What? Every fucking seven months, eight months, you get a little cold, cold sore or we deal with it. But this is actually something that can kill our elders, our, you know, our, our less fortunate people in the society. And it's ruining our whole economy and it's stopping our world. So, all right. So I'm going to end this here. And okay. maybe we'll edit this. Maybe we won't. Either way, we can post this on Facebook just like that, right? I mean, on uh, YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, whatever. We'll, well, we'll try. And if not, maybe we'll just get rid of the whole you talking and just keep me. I'm kidding. Okay, so, um, but tomorrow I'll definitely have my brother, and that'll be super duper duper informative because he's from the onset of his disease to the middle part to everything he went through to. I'm just curious about the whole ride that he went through. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think he actually thought that he had this until um, it really became on the forefront of the news and he realized, holy shit, you know. Um, and I think he was in denial for, for a little while. But then the way that he talks about it, he keeps on saying some of the same words over and over that I've heard other people say. I've heard, I heard um, someone say the words morphe. M-O-R-P-H-Y, I've heard that, like, like it morphs. I've heard that from more than one people, like it morphs. Like some version of that word, it morphs, right? It morphs into something else, into something else. It, and a lot of people use a lot of the same kind of, it's not so much about the language that they use. I could just tell when I'm trying to pull out some kind of, like, feelings from them and, and the way that... And they use words like foreign. So we're very much used to a cold. We're used to um, even strep throat. We're used to the flu. And all of a sudden when you get something that's so different, people use words like that. Foreign. It morphs. And then for people that have had any sort of situation that's been respiratory issues, they always say, they say the same thing. It feels like Something is in my lungs. I've heard glasses in my lungs. I heard some. I've never heard anyone say like it feels like something's like tightening on my lungs. I've heard a lot of like something's living in my lungs, like glass. Um, and there's a lot. Exactly. It feel and that's what's. That's the word that people need to hear a lot. It's creepy. That's so funny that you use that word because I called it that on something I wrote today. I, it's very creepy. It started in bats. Bats. I know it's like it's like if if I could if I could actually take those people in my neighborhood and sit them in front of a fucking projector and watch some goddamn videos, you know, just watch some videos that like some scientific like shit, and then they'll be like, you know, I feel like they, you know, it, it, you know, learning is everything, you know, information is key. Hmm. I'm glad, and you're probably, that's why you drive like an old lady. And I'm happy about that. I'm glad. I would rather drive with you than you know, some, you know. I do. I like driving with you. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's good to have some fear instilled that's, like, very um, realistic and has data and shows, you know, and nowadays, like, what you saw, they can do so much better with those videos now. I mean, they can really show, like, the, the way that it, like, can attach to you and, like, it like takes over your whole body, like like a you know. It's. They really showed about this disease. They people need to understand. Yeah. I think that the science behind it, 
would be, you know, would be very advantageous. And they should probably put it on. See, that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that they should have on the commercials on what the kids watch, like the MTV and the, you know, Bravo and the VH1. That should be on the commercials, not just like together we stand alone. If you see, they all have the same situ situation on the commercials. Have some actual scientific things that make you like want to throw up. And make you like queasy, and then you'll go. You know what? I'm gonna stay home. You know. I also want it. They also need to clarify that if you, if it does get into your lungs, you can have permanent lung damage from it. Oh yeah, so there's so there's so people, much that could need to know look. That they can be permanently it's not a fucking flu that you get over. It can give you permanent physical damage. Well, that's the kind of thing that I would not be using for young kids because kids only think about the now they don't they don't think about tomorrow they don't think oh it will cause this it will cause that they only like that's not how they think so but that's i'm telling you i i i know these teenage i just i know these how these teenage kids think they if you say to them it might cause this in the future they're like go fuck yourself but if you show them something that can like happen right now, like this is how it attaches to you, and this is what it's gonna do to you, like right now, I think that's way more effective than you know something that can happen down the line. Kids don't think like that. I'm telling you, I know that. At on this point, I have to go. So tomorrow, I'm gonna hang up with you right now. Tomorrow, I'll have my unbelievable um, survival survivor of a brother. I'm so proud of him, honestly. I mean. It's just so great that he made it through the whole situation. And and he didn't complain. And, you know, the whole time I was looking for a test, we didn't even get into that, how hard I was looking for a test. He never complained. Um, he was um, just such a trooper. And I will have him, I will do an interview uh, with him tomorrow. And so I'm officially going to call this Corona Persona. All right. And so, and this is all about just truth. And how we're going to make things better and happen. And I love you. And I love you. I love you, my best friend. And I love you as the viewer. And um, so, and if you have any questions or comments, always email me at cjzontv at gmail.com. That's cjzontv at gmail.com. And I hope you tune in to my brother tomorrow. He is a corona survivor and he'll tell you all the scoop and everything you need to know peace